Okay, so let's take a look at the homework assignment here and I'll walk you through what you're going to do. So the first part is to start with your code from the last homework where your robot can take all four compass points and, and works. And you've calibrated the compass and you've adjusted the motor speeds and you've got that tested and working. Don't do this until that part's done. Then you're going to go in your code and where we have this definition of the heading command, SCICOM, based on the timer, we're going to replace that and use the serial port code to read the number from the serial port instead of calculating it from the, the current time. So that is in this code, this example code, serial compass skeleton. And if you look up at the top, this function check command that goes from here all the way down to here, you'll have to copy that into your code. You'll have to add some of the global variables up here so that it works. And then down in your loop function, you need to call this function every time you go through your loop so that it's checking the serial port and getting the heading command. So try this on your own. There's a different demo video of just running this example code and making sure that part works. But what I've done now is I've copied that part, the function, into my code and I've put the code into the robot. And now if I plug my robot into the serial port and turn it on, So here is the serial port. Now if I type in a new heading, like 45 degrees, the robot's turned. And I can type minus 45, and the robot follows. And you can see my heading command is printed out here, and this is the actual heading, so it's getting pretty close. So with this test, you'll need to stay plugged in, which can be a little bit of a challenge if your cable's not very long. You want to be away from places that mess up the compass. You'll need to be outside or in a wooden house to get this to test. So we're going to power that off. Now if you look back at the assignment, that's, that's the first part. You can check all of that. We've pasted this code in and we should be able to type a number into the serial terminal and the robot goes to that heading. So that's great. So then the next part is the ESP32 and I've attached mine, you can see on my robot, with a little twisty right here, twist tie. And if I plug it into the serial port and change the port, five. So it's connected and it's getting this from the internet. This is the heading command, and this should be matching up with this thing. So zero. So this is sending the heading command over the serial port and it's matching this. This display is getting the information from the same place. So these should match. So this is being sent and I know that my Arduino Uno can receive the data. So now I just need to mash them together. I'm going to unplug here. I've got power and ground right here. I use the power from my my motor driver board. There's a 5 volt pin here and that one is separate from the 5 volt regulator on the Uno and so it, it gives all of the 5 volts power. It uses a little bit for this but the rest of it goes into here and that seemed to work fine. You could also try the 5 volt regulator on the Uno, whichever one it gives good results. So I've got power and ground. Ground is coming from the Uno and then this is my TX pin and I just plug it in to the Uno's RX pin. And I disconnect all of my USB cables. And now if I turn it on, we'll see what happens. It should 
it's not going to print anything with a serial for it, but it should be matching up with, with this display. So that's west. Now it's north. South with a little overshoot. And then we'll call it good. Okay, so if you've done that, you've tested your ESP32, then I wired them together and tested it. So if you get all of that working, congratulations, take a break celebrate. That's the last robot task we'll be doing. And if you have questions, get in touch. Hopefully this has been incremental improvements as we go along, so it shouldn't be a big bit of code to write, but you do have to integrate that function into your Arduino Uno or Nano code. The ESP32 code just use as, as uploaded, except to include your particular hotspot credentials. All right, so that's enough for now. I will see you in the Zoom lectures and let me know if you have any questions.